We are finally ready to introduce the formalization of context-free grammars. So we say the context grammar, we usually use the letter G to represent a grammar, and we say that it is defined with this four tuple, where V is the set, a finite set of variables. So variables like we usually use um, higher case um, letters. And then sigma is going to be our finite set of terminals. And note that sigma has to be disjoint from V, right? So all the variables are cannot be a so you cannot have something that is both a variable and a terminal, right? That does not make sense. And this uh, rule is just enforcing that. And third, you have rules which are just pairs, right? Where you have the variable here, um, and then you have variables or uh, terminals. You have a list of these things. So actually, this should be a V and a list of these things. And finally, you have S, which is the start variable. And the start variable has to be in the set V, which is the set of variables. So let us try to represent, for instance, this grammar formally. How would we do it? Well, we would write a set. I'm going to use this curly braces to represent a set. So if I want to say all the variables here, they are S and A. So the second thing would be sigma. Sigma is going to be my terminals. So in this case, the terminals are 0 and 1. Let me write 0 and 1. OK. And then I note that this set is disjoint from this set. So there are no elements on either set that are, the intersection is empty, basically. Uh, secondly, we want to write all the rules. So we have these three rules. And basically, we would write we would write a set that contains all of these. Let me just write. Okay, and finally, we would write um, the start variable, which in this case is S. So this would be a way to represent formally this gram grammar. So how do we formalize yielding? So yielding, we use the arrow as before. And you're going to have on the right hand side, you have u, w, and v. And u, w, v are strings. And strings that may contain either s, a, or 0, 1, as we know. Uh, so either of these u, w's, and v's, they're all strings, right? And then what we need to show is we can partition whatever string we have into three parts, where we have u concatenated with a variable, a concatenated with a string v. And we need to find a rule that yields some, a rule that produces some string w. And again, recall that could be something like this, right? Um, if that belongs to r and g is specified, the grammar is specified as this, then the output would be replacing a by w. Right, so you simply replace it. And you have u and v surrounding it as before. And please note that u and v could potentially be empty strings, right? They could still be empty strings. And some in the previous examples, we omitted this g, but here we make it explicit. And as you know, this is an inductive definition, right? We are saying that this is defined if this and this happens, okay? And this inductive definition has how many parameters? One, two, three. So the first parameter would be a string, the second parameter would be a grammar, and the third parameter would be another string. So what is the derivation? 
we use this little star here to represent the derivation. So we would write um, first this arrow is the transitive closure of the relation. So how do we define it? This is again an inductive definition. This is another operator that we call uh, derived star. And we know that any string is related to itself. So u can reach u, the same string, in zero steps. So there, any point you can write that. Or if u can yield v in zero more steps, and v can yield w in zero, in, in v can yield w in one step, then u can yield w in, you know, these many steps plus one. So this is another inductive definition where we're using the previous definition of this slide here. Okay, it's very important that you understand this. So what is the language of a context-free grammar? It's going to be all the strings that you start with the initial variable s and you derive the string w that you want in zero more steps. And there's a, an additional restriction we are not, which we're not showing here is that w must only contain terminals. So these are all strings that are accepted by the given grammar. And we say that a language is context-free if there exists a grammar that recognizes it. Okay. So now let's formalize ambiguity. Okay, so first we need to introduce what is a leftmost derivation. And a leftmost derivation is one where you always reduce substitute the leftmost remaining variable, right? So if you recall the slides, this is a, this is a, a leftmost derivation because you're always replacing the leftmost variable, right? But in another example, where did we do? Oh, actually this is not, right? Because we derived this, the right-hand side first. This is not a leftmost derivation. This is a leftmost derivation because we start from E and we go always left. Okay. So leftmost derivation is one definition. And then we say that a string is derived ambiguously if we can find two leftmost derivations that are different. Okay, so let's see an example. This is a leftmost and this is a non-leftmost, which is just the example I showed you before. Right. Uh, and now I want to show you an example of ambiguity. So in this example, we are doing always leftmost. In this example, we always doing uh, leftmost. And we have two derivations which are different right so although both are leftmost because we can choose either um, either what did we do first we replaced by e or first we replaced by multiplication and if you do either then you get the two cases that we were talking about before and these two are both leftmost and they are ambiguous as we were mentioning before so this is the formal notion of ambiguity which is very important to understand what is leftmost derivation. In that in some cases, for some grammars, you can have two different distinct leftmost derivations. That is it. Thank you and have a great weekend.